Okay. So I just want to start a little bit by telling y'all some of the um, benefits of using uh, LinkedIn as a career development tool. And I think that's <clears throat> one of the most important um, perspectives to have when thinking about LinkedIn for um, as, a per, as a professional. Uh, oftentimes we think about it as job search, but in my opinion, it is a tool. It's a tool for networking and for career development. Um, the job search function is really good too, um, but it's not solely just for looking for a job. I will say though that um, since I've been using LinkedIn so much, um, I do notice that there's a lot more jobs on LinkedIn and there's so many um, insights that you can get from using the tool for job search. Um, as far as applying for jobs on LinkedIn, I still kind of like to go back and apply um, through the organizational website as opposed to through LinkedIn, but there's some benefits of applying through LinkedIn too, so we'll kind of get to all that. Um, but for today, our primary focus is going to be just getting y'all all set up with the information that you need to start your profile, and then we'll take question individual questions at the end. So um, in terms of, of, of starting, um, as far as why LinkedIn for social work, um, I think we can all agree that we're connectors and LinkedIn is a tool to connect. It's also a search engine. So always keep that in mind as you're building your profile because just like with any search engine, um, keywords are gonna be really important, the right words to use as you're uh, describing your experience and what you're looking for. But you can also use LinkedIn um, in your career as far as finding referrals and resources for clients. Um, one of the things I like the best is when you're looking for resources for your clients, if you look at somebody's LinkedIn page, you can see who they're connected with. Oftentimes they'll have recommendations and you can read through those. You might have mutual connections you can ask. So you can find out a lot of information for your organization or your clients. Um, it gives you the ability to ask the experts. And I think this is important because again, when I started my LinkedIn profile, uh, the first thing I did 15 years ago was I went and bought a book and I can't even remember the name of the book, but I do remember the author, it was Joshua Walden. And I read the book, I did the workbook um, and I used a lot of his tips. And then I thought, well, shoot, I could just connect with Joshua and ask him myself. And that's what I did. I connected with him, asked him questions, tailored some of the answers to social work. And that's the first time I really realized um, that the people who post on LinkedIn, um, they, they wanna be resourceful and they wanna be helpful and they wanna be seen. So. Don't be afraid to reach out to the experts through LinkedIn. Um, it also will give you the opportunity to promote um, your causes, um, promote things that are going on in your organization, and also stay up to date on latest uh, news articles and feeds that have to do with your particular career. As a career development tool, um, you will be able to get visibility from professional contacts. This is great when you're looking for a job. Um, you don't even have to come up with new content. Oftentimes on your feed, if you have the right keywords, uh, where, um, articles will come up or reports, conferences, things like that will come up that um, pertain to your work and you can share them with a comment. Um, there's, there's no need again to reinvent the wheel. Um, it also helps you to establish your reputation and increase your credibility. People will see that you're up to date on things and you're sharing the information. Everybody likes to have uh, fresh information. Um, and then another thing that I think we oftentimes forget in social work is how important it is to connect with people from other disciplines or other geographical areas, different areas of, of expertise. So by 
reaching out um, in terms of other disciplines, you might be looking for a job in a non-traditional social work field. Um, say you're looking for a job at Google and there's a lot of jobs in high tech that social workers can do. And I've even seen um, more recently that they are asking for social work background, but it's kind of hard for us to understand what their industry language is unless we really pour into it. So LinkedIn gives you that opportunity to do research on other disciplines and learn their industry language. So with that, I'm going to stop my share for just a second. I'm going to pull up my profile and talk a little bit um, about how you can get started. And while, while I'm doing this, um, I, I would like to hear from some of y'all as far as um, where you are in the process. Um, do we have anybody here who um, has never, hasn't even started a profile yet? Or maybe new. Ah, thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Erin. I have a profile, but uh, I don't use it. It's not up to date. Okay, good. And I think that's that's oftentimes what happens is we uh, start our profile and then we don't know what to do with it. Um, and then I think that the catch 22 with the LinkedIn profile is that uh, you got to put it out there in order to see other profiles. And sometimes if you don't know how to do that, it can create some hesitancy to get started, right? So I'm, I've even seen some folks that are hesitant just because they don't have a profile picture yet. And you, you kind of need that, right? So um, those are the things that we're gonna start off with is how you can get started with your profile. So let me share my screen here. Okay, can everybody see that okay? All right. So the first thing I wanna talk about is your profile picture. Um, this photo was taken during halftime of a Texas football game, my son had 13 minutes and I already knew what I wanted to wear. We ran to the library and he must have taken like 50 pictures um, with his iPhone and we got one money shot. That's what we call, that's what we call it is a money shot. Um, and so what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to um, go to a professional photographer um, you can do this on your own. If you have trouble, um, in the end, uh, towards the end of the summer, well, we're in the middle of the summer now, but um, Jonathan uh, Shearshan will be back. He's our photographer at the School of Social Work, and he'll be happy to take a picture with a real camera, uh, not the phone. But um, we can get that taken care of for you. But again, don't let that hold you back. Um, even if you have to do it with an iPhone just to get started, Let's just get that out there. The second thing I wanna talk about is your cover photo. And I noticed that a lot of people don't have this cover photo. Um, it's kind of, uh, it, it may seem like it's not important. I think it's very important. Um, I feel like the cover photo is kind of like the way you show up um, to a networking event, like your outfit, what you're gonna wear. And this can speak a lot about you, uh, especially if you're looking for a job. So for example, um, my cover photo is, you know, the sunset at UT, probably because I'll be there till I retire, till the sun goes down. Um, but if I was going to be looking for a job in California, where my sons live, I might put the skyline of LA there. Or I might, if I was looking for a job um, in a different industry, I might change this up so that it doesn't have social work or education affiliated with it. So that pe when people go to your profile, they automatically have an inclination or a perception of what you're thinking about doing. So um, if you don't have an idea of what you would like to put, you can 
um, click on the little pencil here. Always remember the pencil is your friend on your link when you build your profile. So you can click on the pencil and um, it will give you an opportunity to look at other um, cover photos that they've already created. So there's some ideas here. Um, you could also do a quick Google search and uh, type in, you know, maybe LA Skyline cover photo for LinkedIn, and you'll get lots of examples. And you can also build one from Canva. Um, I'm going to give you an example here of one. Um, this is uh, somebody that I partnered with who's in high tech. And uh, she really loved this photo. It was from a study abroad that she had done in college and she didn't wanna get away from this photo. And so what we did was we just added a quote up here at the top. It was a really simple ad and it made all the difference. It made the whole profile come together. So again, there's lots of different ways to create that um, profile, that cover photo. So the next thing I want y'all to consider is your URL, which is this piece right here. When you initially start your profile, you'll get a URL that's assigned to you. And it may or may not have your name, but it'll have a lot of gibberish after it. You have to go in and change that so that if you use your LinkedIn um, profile on your resume, your cover letter, your email signature, it looks nice and clean. So the way that you would do that is you would go to edit public profile and URL, you click on that, and your current URL will be right up there. And you click on the pencil, and you can change this last piece to take off the gibberish at the end. Um, if somebody has your name already, uh, you can add a middle initial, you could add your, um, your acronyms behind your name. Um, it's very rare that I've seen that somebody wasn't able to tailor it or personalize it to their name. But this really does make a big difference um, on your resume. And so you'll change that and save it, and then you'll be good to go. Now in this section um, of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back again, just in case anybody missed how to get there. Whoop, got another one. This is the way that I always get to my profile, but there's also ways by going um, to your picture here to, um, to fix your settings and your profile. But I always just like to click on my picture. Um, so again, right here in the corner, you'll click on that. And this is gonna show you what others see when they look at your profile. Your headshot won't ever pop up here. I'm not sure why, but this is what other people, the way other people will see your profile. And I think that's a really good tool when you're putting it together because it looks different from the, cre um, the editing mode. Um, also, in this section, it'll give you some privacy settings. Um, if there's something that perhaps you don't want to show because um, initially when we first began, I talked about LinkedIn being a great career management tool you can close the button and that won't show, but it will, it will still stay on your profile. So say for example, you're, um, you're changing careers and you have presented many times on uh, case management, but maybe you're changing into um, working in the med medical field or something, a medical social worker. 
and you don't really um, want all of those presentations to show. You could take that off as you're looking for a job. All right. So I wanna stop right there and see if we have any questions. This piece. And there's, there's only about 22 of us. So please feel free to unmute your line. Um, I find that a lot of times when people have questions, other people have the same questions. So um, again, please feel free to unmute your line if you, if you need to. I, I have a question. Do we need yes. a premium? Do we need a premium account? That is a great question. Um, I would say no, um, not to begin with. You can get the free 30 day premium account and um, I can show you what you'll get with that. Um, and I'll, I'll wait a little bit more towards the end, but remind me and I can show you what you get with the premium. In some ways it can be really valuable but it's expensive. It's almost $600 a year. And um, frankly, the only reason that I have the premium account is because um, I literally ran out of searches um, because I've used it for so long. And, um, and that's why I have the premium account now. Okay, so let me go back here. I'm just going to check the chat. I don't think, uh, Julia, that you can change the URL on the mobile phone. Um, there are some features on the mobile phone that, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, features on the um, desktop mode that are not available on the mobile phone. And then Lauren, as far as how often should you post? Um, I like to say spend 15 minutes a day and usually one or two um, a day is good um, or you could do you know a couple a week um, just whatever I think it's more the quality of the content is more important than the quantity of what you share. Okay so next piece we're going to go to your headline this piece right here. What I see with a lot of people, um, including uh, students, is that oftentimes people will put their title in this section. Um, again, I wanna remind you that LinkedIn is a search engine. And these are the words that are gonna pop up when people are, um, are looking for something. So I prefer, rather than having a title, my, my headline before was, director of the NATO center. Um, nobody was looking for me that way. So try to think of words, things that um, either describe you or what you aspire to work on or in or with or where. So for example, um, pretty much all of these things apply to me. Um, except I did have, I realized I just changed it. These all apply to me. Um, previously though, I had uh, on this section, um, career design. And at that time, I was really interested in learning more about how to apply career design to um, social work career development. So I put that on my profile just um, to attract um, more connections uh, that were in that field. So just because you have it on there doesn't mean that, you know, you have to be that person or that word. These are things you're interested in. If you're a student and you want to be a clinical social worker, obviously you can't put clinical social worker because you don't have your license yet, but you can put clinical social work. So think about the words, again, that describe what you want to do. In order to change these you're gonna click right here on this pencil. And um, you only get a limited amount of characters in that headline. And so you definitely wanna make sure that um, 
you, you know, it, you're, it's well thought out what you want to put in there. I see a lot of times people will put their title, um, their acronyms in there. You can put your um, acronyms or your degree right after your last name. Also gives you the opportunity for pronouns. And then here's your headline right here. I like to use these straight lines between each word. And the way that you can do that is on, um, on your computer keyboard above return, you'll see a backslash and a straight line. You can just click on the straight line between the words. And remember, this is not permanent. You can change these every day if you want to. So don't let this get you stuck when you're developing your profile. Um, I've seen so many people get stuck on what they want to say. If you don't like it, just change it five minutes later. That's totally fine. You could even turn that off in, in the um, creator mode. And then um, when you feel comfortable with what you've put, then you can um, publish it. So um, as we're thinking about this piece right here, I think it's also really important to think about personal branding. Um, branding is so important in our field. Uh, for so many different reasons, but just for the sake of time, um, if you think about what most people think about social work who may or may not have ever met a social worker before, they may have you know, an, a certain profile of a social worker. Um, it could be you know, the old you know, um, child welfare worker takes kids away, um, especially somebody who's not in our industry. Um, it could be somebody who um, is in a noble profession. Um, there's many reasons why people think that people want to do social work. So the branding piece is so important. And this really is going to help you to create your brand right here. So as you're looking at your profile, um, it'll give you an opportunity to list things that you may be open to. Now, sometimes if you click, um, well, not sometimes, if you click on hiring, um, you might get a circle around your picture that says open to work. And I have mixed feelings about that. Um, I think that you, there's other ways to tell people that you're open to work aside from having it uh, put on your profile picture. But um, you, will, you will have that opportunity if you want to. This will allow you to always go back. This is the button you're going to use frequently to go back and add sections to your profile. This is going to give you all the options of the things that you can add. So the core is what we're looking at today, which is your education, position, if you've had a break in your career and skills. That's the most basic profile. Then we hit on things that might be recommended to you. And for recommended, you might have things like a featured article that you've written, um, a presentation that you've done, something that you've been involved in. You can feature that on your profile so that every time somebody goes to it, it'll be pinned to the top of your profile or not to the very top, but um, before your uh, education and career and things like that. You can add licenses and certifications. And each one of these will ask you a lot of questions um, so that you can get all the information in there. And then recommendations, we'll talk about that in just a little bit about how to get recommendations for your profile. And then last but not least is just additional things. So these, um, th this is a lot of additional things, but it gives you a good opportunity to um, spotlight different things that um, might be too much for your resume, especially if you're trying to keep your resume down to two page. Again, use this as a career management tool, get it all up on LinkedIn. You don't necessarily have to have everybody see it, 
but at least you'll have it in one place. And so you've got volunteer work, publications, projects, patents, causes, lots of different choices of things to add. So we will scroll down. And this will show, as I'm looking at it from my perspective as the owner of the profile, it's gonna show me what my activity has been. And I've been posting quite a bit lately. So these are some of the articles and things that I've been sharing. Uh, let me go back up to this just real quick. Um, when you post something, if you're wondering about the analytics of it, um, this is a really great way to keep up with that. And I don't believe that this is premium mode. I, I think anybody can look at this, but um, it'll tell you how many people have looked at your article, um, the comments, and you can even dive a little deeper. Um, engagements is kind of how many people have engaged, um, liked it or shared it. The demographics. So this particular article, most of the people that looked at it were social workers. And then um, in some cases, oh, I don't think that they do that anymore. For, I think not for um, this particular um, piece, but for your own profile, you can even get information as to um, where people are uh, geographically that have looked at your profile. So if, if you're looking, again, if you're looking for a job in another state um, and you're seeing that really nobody from that geographical area is looking, from your pro for, looking at your profile, then you might want to add the geographical location right up here in your um, headline. So the next piece, again, I want everybody to think personal branding. That's going to be your about section. And this can be done um, many different ways. Um, mine is just a short bio statement. But I have seen people, um, if you're a new, uh, if you're a student or a new graduate, um, don't let this hold you back. Just put your capabilities on there or put your professional summary on there. Just get something on there so you can keep building your profile. What I would say is the most important part of this piece is that it says who you are and that you're still using the same keywords throughout, right? So for example, um, I like to call myself a career coach. So I wouldn't put career advisor up here and career coach in my headline because then I'm gonna have two different keywords. So make sure you're using the same keywords throughout your, um, your whole profile. And this is very short. You have up to 2,600 characters in this section. I've seen some people who um, use uh, bullet points. Some people have done, you know, a few different paragraphs. Um, you know, especially people who are career changers, they may talk about their current goals, but also say where they've started off. Um, so there's many different ways to do it. Just make sure it's engaging and compelling. Um, I, I'm going to stop here for just a second and see if anybody has questions. Let's go to the chat. What industry do you recommend selecting for social workers? That is a great question because I don't think they let you select social work yet. Um, so uh, I would probably um, do a subset of your industry. So for example, if you're working in healthcare, nonprofit, education, um, choose that as, um, as the industry. And I actually have written to LinkedIn and asked them to add it. 
Um, so maybe if more people did that, we would we would be able to to get that in there. I'm going to step away for just a second because my um, I re I just realized my computer's not plugged in. I'm so sorry. This will just take one second. Okay, I'm back. Don't judge me, y'all. Okay, next we're going to go to the experience section. And this is where you'll add your jobs. And let's go through one. So always click on the pencil. You will add... Um, the name of the organization, and hopefully your organization is linked to LinkedIn. They have an organization page. Otherwise, you won't be able to get this icon right here. So I do have a couple of um, positions that don't have this nice icon, um, but if it's not on there, you might ask your organization if they could just put up a simple page. Um, and I, I just think it looks nicer. Um, then you can just use your bullets from your resume to paste in this section for your experience. So let's click on that. This is where I'm telling you about the company name. If it doesn't pop up, then you can write it in, but you won't get the little um, icon. Um, all of this is pretty clear cut. Got the industry here, the description. Again, this is just bullets from your resume. Um, you can add skills to this position. I don't think I've added mine on this particular one. Um, and then if you have a project or something um, that you're really pr proud of that you'd like to highlight from that particular job, it will allow you to add media. And again, think career management, right? So this conference um, was in 2014 and I put it on here because it was, um, it's, it's kind of important in my field with, with my colleagues from other schools. And that's why I wanted it to show it on here. But had I not had this um, project on my LinkedIn, I might not readily think about it, right? Because that was, that was a long time ago. So you'll, you'll be able to add these. And I'm going to stop and see if anybody has questions about adding their jobs on their profile. Pretty clear cut, right? I put a question in the chat. I'll repeat it real quick. Okay. Um, thanks. This is so helpful. Um, so how far, how far back do you think we should go for experience? I know you pointed out 2014, and then um, I'm coming from a completely different industry. So do you think that's appropriate to add in to LinkedIn? Yes, because you can always hide it, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, career management tool, just put it all on there and say you wanted to collaborate with somebody in that industry, you know, several years from now or something, at least you'll have it on there and you won't have forgotten about it. Sarah, did you have a question? Oh, me, Sarah? Yes, me, Sarah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so the 
areas I've worked in in social work um, have made me want to keep a low public profile. <laughs> um, okay. Privacy concerns have been important. Um, and so LinkedIn is kind of the only like social media that I um, have the most public that I even have like my whole full name on there. And so I haven't, I have all my positions, but they're very vague. And so I'm wondering what you think about balancing, because like in social work, sometimes depending on what we're doing, we might want to keep a low profile, be more right. private. Um, so balancing that with having your wanting to uh, employers and other professionals be able to find you and connect. Well, the good thing is, you know, you have control of every piece of it, right? And so um, I don't think that, are, is, is the concern more about clients looking at the profile? Yeah, exactly. Clients. Okay. Yeah. So I think that, you know, as long as you um, feel comfortable with your geographical location, um, if it's a safety concern, you know, maybe don't put your geographical location, right? Um, if it's more of a concern in terms of clients wondering what you're doing now or where you are, um, you can't always block people. So if there's a specific, you know, person that you don't want to see your profile, there's no problem blocking them from seeing your profile. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't let that, I, I feel like um, with LinkedIn and with technology nowadays that um, it's so important to have a presence and, you know, that's going to be more important for your career than not having a presence because this is your reputation. So I would probably just kind of take piece by piece and make sure that you've got all your bases covered. And on, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm going back in my mind and there's only been one time in all these years that I've heard of a safety concern regarding LinkedIn. Other questions? All right. I do have a small one. Um, yeah. This is kind of specific to me, so I feel a little silly asking, but I started my MSW through Boston University and then ended up transferring over to UT's program. Um, for the education piece, would you recommend including Boston University as a school that I started my MSW with, even though I didn't like receive my degree from them? Are you thinking about going back to Boston? Mm -mm. No. I wouldn't include it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You only have to put where, um, where you finished your, your degree. Great. Thanks so much. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, the skills section. Oh, let's go to education. I'm sorry, I almost forgot that. Um, for your education, um, you can list your concentration on here um, because it probably won't have it. Um, so where it says field of study, you can just list that right, right there. Um, for, I don't, one thing I'm not quite sure of, um, it says the University of Texas Steve Hicks School of Social Work, and we do have an organizational page, um, but for some reason, the Steve Hicks isn't coming up here on the icon. So I'm not quite sure why that is, but make sure that you choose Steve Hicks School of Social Work and not just the University of Texas, if you're from the University of Texas. Um, this also allows you to add activities, a description of the program. Um, you know, if you've got, if you're doing uh, the GRACE program or um, I, I, IBH, 
a scholar or anything like that, you can add that into this section and you can add media files. So if there's a project or something that you've worked on um, in your field placement or, well, actually for your field placement, you'd put that on your experience, but say a project for class that you've done, you can add that um, as a piece of media. I have a quick question. This is Courtney. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, when it comes to education, so so how, where do we distinguish our prior educational experience versus the fact that we're in grad school right now? It would still go under education. Okay, so I just add. And you would just put the end date there so that it gets posted. So um, th I, this is where I got my master's, I mean, my bachelor's degree. So you would have that one, and then you would put this one Got it. in front of that gap. Yeah. I missed the plus sign. Got it. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and well, um, actually, so do you also, I, I was looking in the core part um, that you talked about earlier. It has a part for education as well. Do you have to list it in both places? We're in which core part? Um, Up at the top? Yes. Right here? It'll automatically add it for you. Okay, so you don't have to add it if you've added it below. Right. Okay, yeah. Right, so what will happen is one of these is gonna be where you got your education and one is gonna be where you currently work. But I just happen to still be here. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that's why it looks like that. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to scroll down and you have the opportunity to do licensing and certificates here. Um, I also like to do uh, LinkedIn courses. And so um, they'll put them on there if you want. You don't have to have them on there, but um, I, I tend to put mine on. So let, this is um, the next piece that I, I want to make sure that we get to, which is skills. Um, if you, you know, again, thinking about those keywords, right, and using the same key terms and um, branding, um, LinkedIn is going to populate these for you based on um, what you've done before or whatever's on your profile. So you need to take control of this piece. And the way that you can do that is by simply adding them. You could take the skill quiz, but I, I think the skill, the skill quiz is more for people in different industries that you know, might know different um, computer programs and things like that. So um, I chose to just come up with my own skills. Um, so you will click on the pencil. And this will show all of your skills and you can add them or take them off or change them. Make sure you do this early in your profile because um, if you wait too long, then people are gonna endorse you on things that maybe you don't wanna be endorsed on. Um, so for many years, um, my number one key skill was resumes, right? Well, I don't want to do that like for the rest of my life. I don't want that to be my legacy. Legacy is resume. So that's why I changed it early um, because I really like doing these three things. Um, and it'll let you pin, pin the skills in the order that you want them to be shown. So if we go here, you can reorder your skills and on your endorsement settings, um, you can say if you would like to be endorsed for the skills, or maybe you don't want to be endorsed. Um, I think in, if you're starting off your career, um, I think it is good to have that on because people will know um, what you're good at. And it also um, lets you know what people, the way people are perceiving you, right? So there, this is like, literally like an endorsement, like how they see you, what your reputation is. Um, let's go back here for just a second to adding skills. Say you want to add some a skill on here. 
So remember I was saying that the suggestions are based on your current profile. So these are the things based on my current profile that LinkedIn might add. And um, I think that some of these things are on there because um, maybe they couldn't come up with anything else because I've already got so many of my skills on here. I went through one by one. But if there's something that is not here, you can always add it. And so say for example, um, you do trauma-informed care. And it doesn't really pop up here. Oh, it does now. Um, say it was trauma-informed groups, and that's not on here. You can still add that and just make it your own and save it. So you don't have to um, stick with what they suggest to you on this one. And then you can also list where you put those skills to use. And this is a relatively new feature. Um, and I think this is really great because it shows not only do I know it and is it, it's a skill, but I know how to use it. All right, after you've got your skills all set up, and again, remember you're trying to use the same words over and over again for reinforcement. Um, after you've got the skill set up, you can also get recommendations on your um, profile. And this is so easy to do. Um, if you wanna ask for a recommendation, you can click right here on the, pen, on the not the pencil, the plus, and Say I'm going to ask Amelia for a recommend. Oh, are we connected, Amelia? I don't think we're connected. I have to ask someone we're connected. I'm going to ask you, Joy. So I'm going to ask Joy Allen for a recommendation. And it's going to say, how do we know each other? It gives you a lot of different options here. What was my position at the time? It's going to give me options here. And then it's even going to start you off with a script of how you could ask for the recommendation. And then you just send it and you get your recommendation. Now, some of these other pieces um, I'm not I, I'm not going to cover because of time. Um, but hopefully all of y'all that are on from um, from the school know you can make an appointment with me and we can do some of these individually. But I do wanna show you um, about the premium. So anybody that has premium will have the premium up here. And this is what I have found it most helpful for in terms of um, jobs. So if I was looking um, for a job um, as a career coach, click on career coach, and you're gonna get a lot of different options here. You'll get people, services, companies, jobs, groups, events, all these things that you still have to learn about LinkedIn because all of them are wonderful and um, apply to many different areas. So we'll go to jobs. And this is the job search, um, the job um, function. So let's look at this career coach job at the university. And with just regular LinkedIn, you will get all of this information. If you have premium, as you scroll down, you'll see the gold bar. And it'll give you a little bit more insight into the company, um, who works there. Um, more premium in, um, insights about the, um, the number of people that work there, new hires, job openings, there's 838 job openings at, the, at UT right now. I think that's insane. Um, and if it's a job 
that has more than, um, I think five applicants. Let's go to this one right here. It'll tell you how you measure up to the other applicants, the premium will, which this is probably, I think the best function of premium because as I'm looking at this, it's a career coach job for vet jobs. It looks like I'm in the top 25%. And these are the most common skills that the applicants have. Well, if I'm looking at a job and I think I'd be a perfect fit for that job, what this is telling me is that the only thing on my skill set that matches is leadership, right? So that tells me maybe I need to add coaching as a skill and change management and Microsoft Word so that I can be competitive as well. Now that doesn't mean I'm not gonna get the job because I'm, you know, I could still apply for the job, but it still gives you insight into what you might be lacking on your profile. So we're almost at the top of the hour and I wanted to save some time for questions. How's everybody feeling about your profile? Um, I have I'm feeling, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry, Kaylee. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'm just curious. I have been like staying home with my kids uh, post-graduation. And I'm just curious how like the best way to approach like career breaks in that context on LinkedIn. LinkedIn does give you um, an option to um, demonstrate career breaks. Um, what I would do is uh, also emphasize other things that you may have been doing um, while you were on the break. So, it, you know, maybe volunteer work or, um, you know, anything like that, you can also, you can emphasize that on LinkedIn. You could even like, say, for example, um, I worked with somebody who had a, a pretty long career break and um, they were really involved in um, a homeschool network. You could even put that as a job, but just put non-paid or volunteer so that it pops up on top. So they know that you've been doing things um, without having a year, you know, years of a break. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful. You bet. Amelia, did you have a question? No, I was just gonna say I have a lot to do. Uh, <laughs> I've been um, LinkedIn in like 10 years, so. Okay, so we had um, a question about um, listing all the skills seems overwhelming. Does it hurt to just pick the most relevant to share? It doesn't, just get something on there. You don't have to pick all the skills. You can always add it. You're gonna have this profile for the rest of your life. and. Um, one of these days, it won't be overwhelming. So just get, get something on there. The most important thing, the most important skills that you want to use. Don't, don't highlight skills you don't want to use, but the most important skills you want to use. All right. Well, I want to thank you all so much for spending the Friday afternoon with me. And again, um, we do have LinkedIn profile options available to make appointments. Um, I would suggest that you have your resume reviewed and, um, and we'll get you all started with a great profile. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.